So what's the principal difference between these two that we're going to care about today? Well, if I'm searching for something, I'm going to want to use a flashlight. I can view a large amount of area at once just by pointing in the general direction. Nothing terribly specific. However, if I want to point at something, maybe half a mile away or three kilometers away, I'm going to want to use a laser. And that is what this topic is going to be about. The dispersion, not of light, but of sound. <laughs> okay, so all I'm doing is just hooking up a standard 1 8 connection audio jack to these banana clips. And then the other end of these banana clips will be connected to this small speaker. This came from uh, a very early MP3 player. Uh, I think that was made in the 2002-2003. I've got this connected uh, straight to just a song and I want to uh, just quickly listen to this uh, so that way we can get a good comparison when we then listen to this megaphone and see if we can notice what the difference between them are. And then of course we'll take this apart to see what makes it special. Now a lot of power that this speaker is receiving is being used to move this diaphragm, vibrate it. And we get quite a bit of rich sound from the small speaker. If you can't see this diaphragm vibrating, I'm going to just put some screws on it so we can observe that. So now we can observe that this cone is indeed moving quite a bit. So a lot of that power is being used to create the sound wave uh, and uh, create this very deep sounding uh, bass, even if it is just from a very small uh, 4 ohm, 2.5 watt speaker. We've heard music from this. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to play the song at the exact beginning that I did before, this time with the megaphone. And of course, we suspect that this is going to be louder. It should be because it's going to concentrate the sound. Instead of dispersing it everywhere, all over the place, this one's going to concentrate like a cone. And uh, same way that uh, a laser concentrates the light. So let's see if we notice a difference. Yeah, definitely a difference. Quite a bit louder. Uh, not getting that rich, deep bass. Shouldn't surprise anyone. I haven't changed the volume at all. And I'm hoping that on YouTube this is discernible, but it is considerably louder. So yeah, not surprising. This megaphone is uh, this megaphone considerably uh, louder than its counterpart here, and uh, it should be. I mean that that's what it's designed to uh, to accomplish. Now, um, how is the same uh, wattage, the same power, being broadcasted or being transmitted into this smaller speaker and into this larger speaker? But it should take more power to drive. Uh, the cone up and down the driver. How is it that this is sounding louder with the exact same power? Well, this is using quite a bit of the electricity just to move this diaphragm up and down. And the sound of this is not being concentrated, it's being dispersed. So it has a wider range of audio frequencies and it's using quite a bit of its power to move this diaphragm. Whereas this megaphone has uh, a much smaller range of sound. It was clear that the highs and maybe the mid-tones were broadcasting out of this just fantastic actually, but the bass 
the lower end sucked. Why? Because I, as we suspect, the diaphragm in this thing doesn't move near as much as this. And of course, if this is designed for distance, you're not gonna feel bass half a mile away. That's not what this is designed for. the mass of this you can just feel how heavy this is so it's very dense I would almost think it's got to be steel and um, looks like we have a protective o-ring around here to prevent moisture from entering between this this case and and the bell so uh, this just prevents water uh, moisture from building up and of course getting into the the drive of the speaker okay so now that we've removed the gasket out of the way, I suppose, and the bell, we're left with this, um, this cone. Uh, and what I want to do is we've heard, we've heard this, these two play together when it was constructed, what it sounded like. Now what I would like to do is play the same audio, this time with the center cone, not with this bell. In this case, this sound is going to be coming out of from the side. So I don't expect this to be quite as loud and not nearly as directional, right, as uh, it was with this um, bell constructed on. So let's play this real quick and see if we can uh, notice the difference of that. Again, almost zero bass. The diaphragm in this probably doesn't even move uh, all that much, at least not compared to its small counterpart. It doesn't seem as loud, even with my ears close to it. Not again surprising, because the sound waves are being sent out from all directions now. The high pitch is noticeable. Same as when it was in this bell housing. This bell housing does uh, really two things that this provides. Focuses the sound and blocks sound emanating from all directions, but where they want the sound to emit from. And of course it's excellent as a bell. So let's take this apart quick and observe what it sounds like with this cone off. Another cone, go figure. So um, let's play a song just with this smaller cone. And I believe just by looking in that that is the last cone that's in there. I probably can't get in there. Here, maybe we'll use this flashlight. Uh, if you can see that, that looks like that's just the cone, the driver that's uh, vibrating up and down, just like the uh, smaller one. And that's, you know, dead center within this, um, if I had to guess, aluminum cone, something like that. Um, let's play the same song and let's see if we notice the difference between all of, between when we played with this smaller one and when we had it playing with this bell. Oh yes, not near as loud. Um, I hear a lot of the distortion being caused by this driver attempting to play the bass.
the diameter initially starts fixed, but if you take a look, the diameter increases on this cone. It is reflected by the smaller inner cone and basically sent back down towards the driver. However, it is then reflected again from this housing and is emitted back up, but not just anywhere, but by this housing. And again, the diameter doesn't remain fixed and doesn't decrease. You notice as soon as the sound hits this wall uh, or hits the housing, it, it gets reflected back up and it is sent back out. So we see an increasing diameter from this smaller diameter to this much, much larger diameter which, of course, fits into why this is directional and why it amplifies the sound so well. Oh, huh. take a look at that. This has been dismantled before. Uh, if, uh, let's see. Take a look, quite a bit of uh, damage. Someone has had a, <laughs> kind of eaten up with that screw there. Someone's damaged that screw, I'm not sure uh, obviously when this was, I'm not sure when this was taken apart, but whoever uh, took this apart was a little bit careless. They over tightened the screw and actually nicked it. So uh, a good way to know if someone's been in this is take a good look at the screws. Ah, okay, so we have the magnet housing and it shouldn't surprise anyone that there's a magnet in here if you know even just a little bit about speakers. Um, you know, uh, so it looks like it has just a, a center metal core with magnets all around it. I'm not sure what's underneath here and I'm a bit curious because there's a, like a, a hex a hex size screw as if I could unscrew this and take a look at what's inside but it should just be metal surrounded by magnets I will try to see if I can unscrew that I doubt it nope it doesn't look like oh oh, oh let's take a look Well, it looks like I can turn it, but I may be turning it indefinitely. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere that, uh... I thought maybe this would, um, uh, raise the center up or down, depending on the cone, how it rested, but it doesn't seem to be doing uh, anything even close to that. So I'm not sure. I probably just made more of a mess. What I do find interesting, though, is the construction of this, uh, because it appears that, um... This is not the only magnet. It looks like as if this is a magnet as well. Uh, and this is not. This appears to be metal. Yeah, this, this is metal, but these two are magnets. Uh, why they chose to have two separate magnets rather than just one, I'm not sure. Um, it's a good question. I, I have no idea. Maybe uh, this is just designed to be the overall strong magnet and this is maybe more specific to the dimensions of uh, the center cone, which is right here. What I find interesting about this cone is it doesn't appear that the diaphragm, no, it doesn't appear that this diaphragm actually moves. It's, uh, it's basically stationary. So this would account for the lack of bass. It's not able to vibrate, uh, to move this diaphragm up and down and fluctuate it to produce enough air to make that bass sound and as a result we get highs and mid-range but we don't get any lows you know you, you just can't hear them so I found that fairly interesting yeah. so right now I'm attempt I'm actually playing the song and I don't have any magnet near it and I don't hear a single thing there is no sound coming from this it might as well not be playing but look what happens as I approach this uh, coil with this magnet. You can hear it now. I'm going to approach it with it a little closer. <laughs> 